Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach and today we're doing some more AP Physics 1 um, rotation problems. As usual, I suggest you pause the video, attempt to do the problem on your own, and then come back after you've uh, watched the video after you've attempted the problem. Okay, so let's start. With a, a long uniform rod of mass M and length uh, L supported by the left end of the horizontal axis into the page and perpendicular to the rod is shown above. Uh, in... Oh, okay, so there's something sticking out right here that's holding it. Okay, the right end is connected to the ceiling by a thin vertical through so that the rod is horizontal. The moment of an, the moment of inertia or rotational inertia of the rod about the axis is ML squared over three. Express all answers to this in terms of M, L, and G. Determine the magnitude and direction of the force exerted on the rod by the axis. Okay, so let's do a free body diagram. I have tension from this thread. I have force of gravity here at the center of the rod because if it's uniform, it's always at the center. And then this thing is going to, let's see, It's not going to have a horizontal force. It's going to be a force either up or down. Kind of sort of depends on uh, everything. Um, let's just assume it's up. I don't actually know which way the force is, but all of these have to, like, this is, we'll call this the normal force, for lack of a better word. It's the, it, it's the force that I'm trying to find, okay? Now, because everything is in equilibrium at this point, um, all the forces... There's two things that have to be true. The net force has to be zero, and the net torque has to be zero. Because it's an equilibrium, so it's not accelerating, and it's also not rotating. So the net force equals zero is, is pretty straightforward. Um, the upward forces have to equal the downward forces. So I'll say up is positive, and I'll also say um, counterclockwise is positive for rotation. Okay, so I have Fn, plus T has to equal force of gravity, which is just equal to M times G, okay? But I don't have enough information from the net force equation, right? Because I don't know the normal force, I also don't know the tension. So I have to look at torques. Now, if I look at this, um, Fn doesn't uh, apply any rotation because it's rotating around this horizontal axis point here. Like this thing's kind of rotating like this. Um, Oh yeah, so let me make it like this is positive for positive rotation because it's this thing's gonna pivot around here. It's gonna swing like the up it like this. So um, the force of gravity is causing a positive torque because it's trying to, to rotate it clockwise. Does that make sense? And I've I've decided clockwise would be positive in this case. So uh, his force is that way. His r vector is already um, like this. So it would just be simply um, L over uh, the, the torque there from force of gravity. It's mg, that's the force, times the distance. And this distance is already perpendicular to this, so that I would just do L over 2. Plus, OK, and that's the positive torque. Uh, the tension is doing negative torque, because it's pulling it in a way that it's trying to pulling it um, counterclockwise in the negative direction. So I would do minus t times, uh, and his distance vector also is already perpendicular to the force vector, and that's L equals 0. So TL is equal to mg L over 2. The L's cancel. So T is equal to mg over 2. So now that I know T, I can plug that back into here. Fn plus 1 half mg is equal to mg. So the normal force has to equal positive 1 half mg. Right? Because 1 half mg plus 1 half mg will give me mg. The direction is also upward. Okay? Because I got a positive value. See, if I had guessed downward, I would have gotten a negative value. Okay? The thread is then burned by match for the time immediately after the thread breaks to determine each of the following. The angular acceleration of the rod about the axis. So as soon as I cut it, what is the angular acceleration? Well, the net torque in this case 
would just be this part, mgl over 2, that's equal to i alpha. i, they told you, was ml squared over 3 times alpha. So alpha, let's see, the m's cancel, one of the l's cancel, so it's equal to 3 halves g over l. Okay. The translational acceleration of the center of mass of the rod. Okay, so that means that's his linear acceleration right here. His linear acceleration is always alpha r. The alpha we know is 3 half g over l. The l is the dist is the position. Right? See, the linear acceleration is going to be faster here and here as it rotates. So it, they want it here, which is times l over 2. That's what r is, the distance from the point of rotation. So that's equal to 3 halves g over r. So, uh, wait, L over, L over, why did I say L over, L over 2, 3 fourths G, okay, D, the force exerted at the end of the rod by the axis. So they want to know what this normal force is here at this point. How would you do that? You would have to use a net force equation. But they're not equal. Well, th well, this whole system is accelerating downward. If I think about it, the linear acceleration. It, the linear, acceler linear part is accelerating downward. Hmm, has FG down, has FN up. Hmm, maybe, maybe you do it that way. I say the net force is the downward force minus the upward force. It's equal to FG minus FN. That's equal to uh, MG minus FN. Just replace with FG, and then that has to equal M times A, and M times 3 fourths G. Is that how you do it? So FN would have to equal 1 fourth MG. This is MG minus 3 fourths MG. Interesting. I don't know about this one. This one I want to double check. I'm not entirely sure. I got to think about that. Um, if this is a correct setup, to, to assume, to treat it like a linear like it's falling. It's not really falling, but maybe we just say it is. Um, determine the angular velocity of the rod as a function of theta, the arbitrary angle through which the rod has swung. I think you do conservation of energy for here. Because what's going to happen is when I go from here to, like say, like a point like this. So let me draw like. If I go from here to here and I've rotated a certain angle, like theta naught, theta, um, basically I've converted some potential energy into kinetic energy. Okay. Now, I think we're going to say that. Wherever I'm at here, I have zero, like basically the potential energy that I converted is this distance here. Um, so it's m times g times h. h is how much it fell here. Well, if this is theta and this is L over 2, like this distance, this is L over 2, this distance has to be... Um, Oh, this is not an easy one because actually, really, it goes like this. But I only want the vertical displacement. L over two. This is L over two. 
I only want the vertical displacement. So what do I do? Do I say L over 2? Here, let me, let me draw it with straight lines. So like this is L over 2, and this is L over 2 to this point. But then I'm really interested in how much it translated vertically like this. So this is theta. I really only want this part. I think that this is a more complicated geometry problem. I think what they really kind of would think of you to do is to simply say that even though it's, it, it kind of swung downward like, well, that's only for small angles. So this is kind of a geometry question because if this is, I swung through here. Yeah, how much potential energy? This is a tricky question. The angular velocity of the rod is a function of because what I want to do is I want there's something missing here and you want to set it to equal to the rotational energy of one half i omega squared. And then you can just solve for omega because you know what i is. But this part is a little bit tricky how much energy um, it fell by. Well so oh no 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 it's not. Never mind. It's this distance right here. It's L over two times uh, sine of, yeah, this is sine theta. I don't know why I was thinking. Okay, uh, these one halves will cancel. Oh, and this this I is um, ML squared over three omega squared. So the M's will also cancel. One of the L's will cancel. So I can multiply by three. So I get three G sine theta divided by L equals omega squared. So then omega equals the square root of 3G sine theta over L. Okay, um, I think I pretty much got that problem right. Um, like I said, I think part D I'm not totally sure about if I did that correctly, but um, yeah, that was a pretty challenging question. Um, hope you found that helpful. Uh, I'll see you guys, see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.